Greetings in the name of our idol-smashing Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. St. Mark Lutheran Church, if you don't know this, used to be known as the German Lutheran Church because it was founded by German immigrants to Ferndale. Now, do you know who is considered the apostle to the Germans? One St. Boniface, the great St. Boniface. He was born in England around 680 AD, and he was martyred in Germany in 754 AD. This 74-year-old evangelist died after a full life of service to the Lord, and while still very much engaged in the evangelism effort, in converting pagans to Christ, he was killed by a band of hostiles when he refused to let his companions defend him. They wanted to defend St. Boniface. They wanted to protect this great evangelist, but he wouldn't let them. As he was exhorting them to trust in God and to welcome the prospect of dying for the faith, they were attacked by these pagans. St. Boniface was among the first to fall. Before his death, however, he founded many monasteries throughout Germany, and later he enlarged them. He, he brought a veritable army of English missionaries into the German lands to oversee his Christian outposts that he had planted. He brought in St. Lull and St. Bucard and St. Wigbert, to name just a few with fun names. One success propelled him, this St. Boniface, to the next success, to the next and to the next. As he continually searched out more and more pagans who were in need of the gospel, individuals and groups alike in one town and the next, planting, establishing, spreading, building, fortifying, Christianizing these German heathens. Now, as Lutherans, we can certainly appreciate the importance of St. Boniface because the pagans he converted, well, they're the very same people from whom came Reverend Dr. Martin Luther and the Reformation of the church, reintroducing, reforming the church back to the gospel, bringing it back to its roots in Jesus Christ alone. Now, at five years old, St. Boniface overheard a conversation between some monastic visitors who were staying in his home, and he decided after hearing their conversation that he wanted to be just like them started school at age seven. His education, no doubt, prepared him for his influential future in the church. St. Boniface is known for his courage in the face of his pagan adversaries and for his bravery, bravery that served him well even up to his death. He's also known, if you didn't know this, for his perseverance in the face of defeat, overcoming obstacles, after evangelism efforts had previously failed, he didn't give up. Try, try, and try again. <laughs> His courage was displayed on the day that the Holy Spirit opened the floodgates for his success among the Germans. On a day that had been previously publicly announced, this is how bold our Christian saint is in, in a community, in a, in a people full of pagans, very few Christians even yet. And this Christian evangelist comes in and publicly announces that he is going to chop down a tree. In the midst of an awestruck pagan crowd, St. Boniface attacked with an ax in hand one of the chief objects of popular veneration, Donar's sacred oak, or for us laymen, Thor's sacred oak. When the pagan gods didn't do anything to Boniface, when he wasn't struck by lightning, when he, when he wasn't toppled by these false idols, the people began to realize their religion was indeed false. And the Christian evangelism work that St. Boniface had before him advanced steadily. He struck at the root of their paganism boldly. With their tree, he cut down their false religion, and with the wood from their tree, he built a church, literally. <laughs> That's how bold St. Boniface is. This is the most memorable event of Boniface's life, to be sure. What often evades our attention when talking about Boniface 
is that this bold act occurred after he returned to the German lands. He had been among these people once before, and he couldn't convert any of them. Without any success in bringing them to Jesus, they resisted and resisted and resisted. Had this faithful evangelist given up after his first attempt to spread the gospel, had he not returned with confidence in Christ, and with a bold demeanor. Well, we can rightly say that Ferndale's German Lutheran Church would have never been, because the Lutheran Church would have never been. And while that's an interesting thought to entertain, there's a consideration that will bear much more fruit if we take the time to entertain it. Consider how Boniface the Bold dared to cut against the grain of the pagan culture he was in. And then consider what he did when the Lord blessed his courage with success. What did Boniface do? He got to work building Christ's church, literally with his hands, building the structure, but also figuratively building the stones that are Christians into the church, bringing in souls. He only stopped, only stopped, even at 74, when he himself was cut down by the Lord's enemies. An end he met with his trademark courage and conviction. Dear saints, may the Lord bless us in our own land, of pagans here in Humboldt County with the same undeterred courage to plant, establish, spread, build, fortify, to Christianize Humboldt County. His will be done. Amen.